Okay, so we talked about step one, this sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system seesaw that triggers off a domino effect of negative consequences for the metabolism. So what is the first step? What's the first step that causes this? Well, the first step is stress. Now, I know what you're thinking, stress, great. This term is so ambiguous. Everyone talks about stress. Nobody really knows what it means. Now, when we say stress, we don't necessarily mean emotional stress. You don't have to be emotional or feel sadness or anxiety to be stressed out. Stress means metabolic stress. Perhaps a better way to think about this is metabolic tension. Think of a high-end sports car parked in your driveway. You go get in the car, start it up, and start revving the engine as fast as you can while it remains in park. You're going to do damage to the engine, aren't you? You're going to be using up fuel, aren't you? That's not a healthy thing to do for your car. Well, when we say stress in the context of metabolic dysfunction and metabolic damage, what we mean is a physiology that has had too much metabolic tension put on it. Where does this metabolic tension come from? It comes from eating less and exercising excessively. Now, let's be clear, some people can eat less and exercise like crazy and never, ever have an issue. Their metabolism runs fine, their car engine goes on performing wonderfully. Many people, however, cannot. And that all speaks to the unfairness of what are our individual metabolic reactions. But when you do extreme dieting, when you do chronic exercise, when you push your body to the extreme over time and over years, some people it might take them one week to get into problems. Some people it might take them several years before they run into problems. But when we talk about stress, that is what we're talking about. And what this stress begins to do is impact the brain. At the base of the brain stem, there is a control center called the hypothalamus. And that hypothalamus communicates with another gland that's close to the brain called the pituitary. And then the pituitary and hypothalamus together communicate with your metabolic engine, so to speak. They send signals to your adrenal glands. They send signals to your thyroid glands. They send signals to the ovaries and testicles. And what we call this is the HP, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, thyroid, and ovarian or testicular axis. Now here is what happens. This stress, you can really think of this stress as an irritant. It begins to irritate the hypothalamus in the brain. The brain doesn't like that. It can't function like that for long. So it starts to not listen. It starts to downregulate some of its sensing capabilities. And it starts to overstimulate the adrenals the thyroid and the ovaries in the short term. And this is a normal process. This is what we do in acute stress. However, when this continues and the irritation builds up, now the communication system between the adrenals, between the thyroid gland, and between the ovaries and brain become dysfunctional, become damaged. The communication system gets broken. It gets severed. Now your metabolism is running into dysfunction. Now, some people, if they stop the stress at that point, the brain comes back online and the adrenals, thyroid, and ovaries come back online. No problem. For some people, however, this continued stress continues this process for a long period of time. And even when they stop, all of a sudden now, the adrenals no longer work. The thyroid doesn't function okay and their menstrual cycle or their libido if they're a man starts to become dysfunctional. They can't produce enough testosterone anymore. Estrogen and progesterone become affected. Thyroid hormone is no longer turning on the way it should and you can no longer respond to stress the way you once did. This is the first domino that fails. That stress from the sympathetic overdrive creates irritation in the hypothalamus and pituitary system, which then starts to disrupt your metabolic engine. 
The next thing that begins to occur after that is the digestive system becomes hit. And we're going to go into a great deal about that. The digestive system, you will learn, is a window into sympathetic and parasympathetic balance. Once the digestive system goes, now you can no longer digest your food. So you're not assimilating your nutrients. You're not getting in the nutrients that you need. Well, here is the catch-22. To continue this stress and adapting to this stress, you need nutrients. You need vitamins and minerals. You need amino acids. You need calories and things like that. If you cannot get them and they're not being absorbed and utilized well, this dysfunction gets even greater, putting even more stress here. So now you're not digesting your food appropriately. Now you're developing immune reactions and sensitivities to particular foods and you're doing damage all around your body. That's the domino that falls next is the digestive tract and the ability to get nutrients and use them. And then what happens after that is all your cellular mechanics, your, your cellular machinery, the engines that sit in each cell begin to not have the fuel and the resources they need to do their job. You start seeing mitochondrial dysfunction. The mitochondria are the little energy factories in every single one of your cells. And that then feeds back in a vicious cycle creating more stress, more metabolic tension and continues this negative process over and over and over. Now, how do we fix this? What's this program going to do to get this back online? That's what we're going to talk about next.